Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's second DLC, the Indigo Disc, added some incredible new features. The return of all the starter Pokemon, Synchronize Mode, Flying, and all the Legendaries, even though they're all shiny locked. And I've played this brand new DLC for 100 hours, and caught a ton of shiny Pokemon. So, let's talk about it. I entered the Blueberry Academy, and was told to go to class. So of course, I didn't and immediately started looking for my first shiny target. But good things don't come to those that skip class. Stay in school, kids. So I spent the first five, six hours of my DLC experience searching. Eventually, I stumbled upon this guy. Is that a? Not my target. But a shiny is a shiny. And this one is a really nice one. And then about 20 minutes later, I found one of my actual targets this absolute cutie. And he was caught with a luxury ball because he's a gentleman like that. Two squids. Also, they didn't fix the camera problems. So day two, I continued the hunt that took up most of my time on day one, that being Trap Inch. And luckily, it didn't take too much longer for me to find. Yes, let's go. A lot less green than I thought it would be, but still looks awesome. And right next to this little guy, you can find a different ground type, which I wouldn't even say I was looking for, but I guess it was looking oh, for me. What a guy. After this, I decided I would just ride around the terrarium for a little bit. Also, did anyone else notice it's called the terrarium and not the terrarium? Very clever little pun. I see you, Game Freak. I see you. Anyways, by doing this, I discovered this DLC had brought one of my favorite Pokemon of all time into Generation oh my God, 9. They have Lantern. I may be one of the only Lantern fans in the world, but it's the GOAT. So I obviously had to hunt for this majestic creature. And oh boy, Lantern did not want to make an appearance. But this guy oh, did. Oh my god. Another thing the Indigo Disc did was bring back most regional variants. It's really cool to see all these Pokemon out in the wild. Does it make sense that somehow in the Terrarium, there's regional Pokemon from Alola, Galar, and Hisui spread throughout all four biomes? And all while we're in Unova? Well, how about you don't ask too many questions? I'll talk a bit more about this later though. Anyways, after that, I figured I was better off doing a couple of date skips to get myself a Lantern or Chinchou Outbreak. Little secret for those of you that may not know, when you're date skipping for mass outbreaks, you don't even have to change the time on your Switch. Just go to the date and time and press OK. And when you go back to your game, it resets the outbreaks. And luckily for me, a Chinchou Outbreak showed up really quickly. So I went over there and started blasting. Also, I evolved my Trap Inch into a Flygon. But after a bit of time at this outbreak, oh, is that a shiny? Honestly, the shiny oh, ended up being less go, noticeable go. than I was expecting. But, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. And even though Chin Chow is so adorable, it needed to evolve. Lantern, my Yay. beloved. And you know what? I'm about, I'm about to, to, say to say it. it. I love Lantern but Chin Chow does have the better shiny. Now that I had found some targets and had a team of shiny Pokemon, I could actually start doing some of the story. Now, I would say that I'm going to refrain from telling spoilers, but to be quite honest, there really isn't much story for me to spoil. So, yeah, I might be saying some stuff. So, if you wanna play the DLC for yourself completely blind, you've been warned. Basically, there's five battles you need to do. That's it. But before I talk about that, it's starter time. One of the main selling points for the Indigo Disc is that every single starter Pokemon was not only going to be obtainable, but shiny huntable without hatching eggs. And if you know me, you know I absolutely detest doing the Masuda method in Scarlet and Violet. So this was some of the greatest news to me. So the way this works is that you need to increase the biodiversity of each biome in the terrarium. Doing so makes the starter spawn. Here's the list of which starters can be found in which biome. And the way you unlock this feature is by spending 3000 BP per biome. BP is obtained by completing little quests. 
Now, these quests can be extremely tedious to do, like going to the only TM machine to make a TM, or sneaking up on a Pokemon, or whatever. But after completing 10 of them, you get a rarer task, which you can do for increased points. But there's a secret method in order to get a lot of BP really, really fast. Union Circle. In a Union Circle, every person gets their own set of quests. And when one is completed, everyone gets the BP. And that's not all, because there's group only quests that you also get after completing three of the red rarer quests. And they give an insane amount of BP. So I had a couple people from my chat, because I was streaming the DLC, join my game and help me grind to 3k BP. And with all this BP, I increased the biodiversity of the coastal biome because my favorite little guy spawns there. My first Pokemon game was Sapphire. So that means my very first Pokemon ever was one of these three. And well, I already told you I did the coastal biome. So Mudkip, oh, my very oh. first Pokemon. My favorite <laughs> starter my was my next target. And it must have been fate because I made a sandwich and my son returned to me in just five minutes. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! My son! Ah! <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> yes, my boy. Yes! Can, can you tell I like Mudkip? And I decided to catch him in a dream ball. Not only because it matches perfectly, but because this is a dream shiny of mine. So I got out of this cave to get a better look at my newest team member. And then this happened. <laughs> what? Boy, wh <laughs> what? Oh, he's perfect. He's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Synchro mode is the single greatest feature ever added to a Pokemon game. Another new thing added with this DLC. It's actually so crazy how one simple feature can be so entertaining. Like something I never knew I needed, but now that I have it, if it ever gets taken away from me, I will riot. And some Pokemon you play as, holy moly, they be zooming. And in my opinion, it also makes shiny hunting better. Let me explain. One of the most obnoxious aspects of shiny hunting in Scarlet and Violet is that you constantly have to be looking behind you because Pokemon spawn in a radius around your character. Well, the reason I find this so annoying is because you can't see in front of yourself. Duh. And because of that, you'll find yourself running into wild Pokemon over and over again. And sometimes, if you're really lucky, you'll find yourself in the middle of an infinite loop of wild Pokemon battles. Yay! But with Synchro Mode, you don't have to worry about that. Ah, nice and relaxing. But deep down, this feature has a dark secret. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Anyways, I had a Lapras outbreak. And everyone loves Lapras. Myself included. But of course, I did not find Lapras right away. Instead, is that a shiny tentacool? Oh my goodness. <laughs> the tentacool line will not leave me alone. <laughs> Brother. At least it's another banger shiny. And something like that definitely won't happen again while I'm looking for Labyrinth. Definitely. Is that a shiny? Now, if only I could find the shiny I was actually looking for. Synchro. No! No! <laughs> no! Uh. Okay, but like, it'll definitely be a quick reclaim, right? Oh, is that a shiny dugong? No! No! And for my second dugong, I came up with a great nickname. But eventually, Oh my god, oh my god, almost failed it again. Even though I found the shiny, catching it was no simple task. Lapras has Perish Song, so it was a race against the clock to get it into a ball. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
You could just run away before Paris Song hits zero. For real though, it took like 10 Yay, minutes to catch it. Finally. <laughs> Anyways, now that I had my Lapras and Dugongs and Tentacool, it was time to do a bit more story. Like I said before, there's five battles you have to do. I won't say who you battle or any other details, but I thought it would be fun to have a different variation of my team for each battle. So, for the first battle, the team was Swampert, Lantern, Flygon, Lapras, Tentacruel, and Eggnog the Dugong. And of course, I won. With a goaded team like that, no big deal. And as a reward, the game gave me this. Oh my god, shiny trap inch! <laughs> Literally 20 seconds after leaving the plaza. Now, even though I just found that shiny, there was a couple more I needed in preparation before taking on the second battle. First up was Golit. If you go to the polar biome with a ground sandwich, the little guy and his dad are everywhere. And luck must have still been on my side, because only after a few minutes searching... Oh, wait a second, hold on... <laughs> This shiny is so nice, and possibly one of my new favorites after discovering it. And I had to catch it with a heavy ball. It goes perfectly. Yes, let's go. I also had the perfect nickname in mind for this little fella. I've been rewatching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, so. And now he really is Alphonse. <laughs> now it was time to catch myself some fire types, but I got a little distracted as per usual. So, I spent the next chunk of my time hunting for this painting pup, but as my favorite Pokemon. So, worth it. This outbreak was kinda doo-doo though. For some reason, all these Smeargle were trapped on this iceberg. So, there was also a bunch of ice and water Pokemon spawning around it. Eventually, I found Picasso. And before I could actually attempt to find a fire type, I briefly hunted Doduo but didn't end up finding anything. Now it was time to catch some fire types. I started off looking for Magby, which has such a nice shiny, and so does its evolutions, even though they changed the color scheme for some reason. This hunt took me a pretty long time though, and if that wasn't bad enough, Sag. I was redeemed though, it just took a few more hours. But this little shiny, dinosaur, thing, was worth the wait. After all that turmoil, I figured the next best plan would be to get myself a fire or fighting type Pokemon. So why not knock out two burbs with one stone and get a fire fighting Pokemon? And if you don't know, there's three options for us. Back in the day, it was a big meme because Game Freak made three fire starter Pokemon back to back to back that all ended up being fire fighting. And although Infernape is my favorite of the bunch, I decided to hunt Tepig, since I've never used Embor before. But the game had a different plan for me. I unlocked the Canyon Biome Biodiversity, and on my way over to where the little piggy spawns, the cat distribution system truly works in mysterious ways. Obviously not the starter I was intending on catching, but holy moly does this shiny go hard. I did still go over and give the Tepig hunt an honest try, but it wasn't meant to be. I can't complain though, because I've never used Litten before either. I love cats, but I absolutely hate the design of Incineroar. Sorry to all five people that like it. So I evolved this little kitty into Toracat, in the most appropriate place. There can only be one cat atop this rock. Oh, okay. My apologies, I wasn't familiar with your game. And I refused to turn my cute kitty into an abomination. I also evolved my Magby and my Inkay, which in order to do so, you literally have to hold your switch upside down. And now our team was ready for battle number two. Our mainstays, Swampert and Lantern, alongside some new faces, Magmortar, Toracat, Malamar, and Alphonse the Golurk. Again, no spoilers, but let's just say, easy clap. Definitely beat it on my first try. Don't go check the VOD. Before taking on battle number three, I had three shinies I wanted to catch. Starting off with Galarian Slowpoke. Galarian Slowpoke is a great shiny to hunt. If you know Slowpoke, you know what shiny is. 
pretty bad, but they fixed it with this regional variant. Not only that, but they made it a poison type, which is just what I'm looking for. So I synced up with my buddy Swampert again to take on this hunt. And during this hunt, I discovered the true horrors of synchro mode. It all started off nice and jolly, but quickly escalated. I saw this crab, and it looked different to me, but I just couldn't remember what regular crab brawler looked like. I checked back at my character to see how far away I was. I thought everything was fine. I desynced, only to discover I was in fact out of range. It had despawned, and it was a shiny. Rip. So, synchro mode may be fun, but it's hard to tell when a Pokemon is too far away. Surely I won't make this mistake again later. I wasn't too beat up about it though. It was just some random crab. I wasn't looking for that anyways. And then, tragedy struck. <gasps> no. Synchro mode is the single worst feature ever added to a Pokemon game. Not really. Yeah, so you can kill shinies while in synchro mode. Remember before how I was so happy to be able to run around with my camera behind me without a care in the world? Well, new fear unlocked. I had been burned by synchro mode two times now. Fortunately, I was able to find another shiny slowpoke not too long after this heartbreak. And directly after one regional variant, I went for another. It makes no sense how Galarian Slowpoke and Alolan Muck can be found in pretty much the same spot, but again, don't ask too many questions. But I learned my lesson. No more Synchro Mode, right? Of course not. It's just too much fun to watch Swampert hop around. But then the same thing happened. I found a shiny Grimer, and again, was out of range. Cut this out. I'm done. I stopped shiny hunting with synchro mode after that, and eventually found a shiny muck. Oh, and I also found another Inkay too. And to finish off, I went back to the snowy mountain in the polar biome to get myself a shiny beldum, which took a while to show up, but 100% worth all the trouble. And with all three new members, I did some more evolutions, and then did battle number three, which was probably the easiest one. Before my fourth battle, I only had one target. Duraldon got an evolution, for some reason, but that just gives me an excuse to hunt for it. Now, the hunt for Duraldon can be a little tough. It also spawns in the polar biome, and its shiny doesn't change too much. So if a blizzard starts, it'll be pretty hard to see. Luckily for you, I have professional gamer tips. Tip number one, Duraldon has a red nub on its head. If it's shiny, then it turns chrome. End of tips. This hunt also took a decent amount of time, but we got it done. Oh. <laughs> and with this chrome dome, I could give the metal alloy to evolve it into arch... Archa... Archaladon? Which has such a sick shiny. Also, is this technically considered a Unovan evolution? Or, like, are the people of Galar just stupid? So, that was the one hunt I wanted to do. Except, I lied. There was another hunt. I just had done it a little while ago. Egg. The reason I hunted this shiny in particular was to test something. Both versions of Executor spawn in the Terrarium, but Kanto Executor spawns in the Savannah, and Alolan spawns in the Coastal Biome. So I wanted to see if the variant would change depending on where I evolved these eggs. I went to the Coastal Biome and gave them a Leaf Stone. If it became an Alolan Executor, I was adding it to my team. And if not, well, then it'll just spend the rest of its life in the box. End. Ooh. So even though a lowland executor spawns in the coastal biome, evolving it here gives you a regular one, which begs the question once again, how are there regional variants here? Hey, what did we say about asking questions? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Anyways, it was time for battle number four. Blah, blah, who cares? 
What's great about this battle in particular is that the TM you get for winning evolves Diplin. Remember Diplin from the Teal Mask? Well, for some reason, it also has a new evolution, even though it itself was already a new evolution. I don't know, the Pokemon Company is giving a lot of Pokemon new evolutions. So here it is in all of its glory. And now that that's out of the way, it was time for our final battle. So I gathered together my favorite team members from our previous four battles. So here's the dream team. Swampert, Lantern, Magmortar, Slowbro, Metagross, and Archilodon. And I mean, with a team like that, come on, easy peasy. So after those five battles, there's a bit more to the story. I won't say much about it, except this. They really took the worst part about Scarlet and Violet and made it the final boss. Roll credits. So that's the end of the Indigo Disc. But there's still some things to do after finishing the story. For starters, this is when you unlock the ability to fly, which I can't believe this wasn't in the base game. And this is also when you could start catching legendary Pokemon. The biggest disappointment of the Indigo Disc is the fact that they shiny locked every legendary Pokemon. Like, why? I will never understand the reason to shiny lock Pokemon, ever. To me, it makes no sense. There is no point. If people want to spend countless hours of their time doing soft resets to hunt shinies, why stop them? I just do not understand it. And unfortunately, it's obviously something that isn't going away, ever. I just can't believe they gave us the ability to shiny hunt legendaries with Dynamax Adventures in Sword and Shield, and then just said, nope, for Scarlet and Violet. As someone who never did any DAs in Gen 8, I was looking forward to hunting legendaries in Gen 9. Of course they shiny lock them. Why wouldn't they? Game Freak hates shiny hunters. I guess at the very least, I have an excuse to go back to Sword and Shield to do some DAs. Okay, rant over. There's two more things that I want to talk about. First, Shiny Minior. Minior has such a great shiny. I remember hunting for one back in Sun and Moon. I'm such a sucker for black shinies. Well, just like when you hunt Ditto or Zoroa in Scarlet and Violet, you can't actually tell if there's a shiny Minior on your screen. The only way to tell is by auto battling. It took me so long to find this shooting star, but eventually I did. And it was so worth it. All right, all right. I've talked about some truly incredible shinies today. Starters, pseudo legendaries, new Pokemon. What could possibly top all of that? Blitzel. Really? Blitzel? Yes. Just like in DLC 1, there's a free shiny Pokemon to get in DLC 2. But again, it's not so simple. Once you finish the main story, you can start inviting people to your club room. In order to do so, you'll need a lot of BP. So, you know what that means. Anyways, once you have enough BP to invite people, after inviting someone to your club three times, you can trade them. Doing these trades lets you invite more characters, and once you've traded with at least 10 different people, you unlock one final secret boss battle. Think like Red on top of Mount Silver, or Cynthia in black and white. Spoilers for those games, sorry. But once you challenge this person, and win, you're rewarded with a shiny Blitzel. Why Blitzel? Who knows. But it's super cool when they add stuff like this. There's a couple more things I did with my 100 hours of playtime of the Indigo Disc, but you're just gonna have to wait and see what that is next time. And trust me, you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. Happy Holidays!